In today's video, we're going to look at the association between two categorical variables. When we do this, we usually look at chi-square. And it's a pretty simple procedure when you have two levels, like male-female, and you're testing against two other uh, labels, like um, wear glasses, don't wear glasses. But when you get more than two levels, because then, then the chi-square association is just between those two, and you can, if, if you find a significance, you can just look at the numbers and the percentages, and you can kind of tell, um, well, they're just different. They're different. Males and females would be different in their rate of wearing glasses if the chi-square was significant. Sometimes you have more than two levels. So you might have ethnicity. Um, so Caucasian, Asian, African American, Hispanic, by wearing glasses or not. And then you can get a significant chi-square again. And that's like when we found analysis of variance being significant. You get a significant F, but you don't know where the difference is. So today we're going to talk about a little technique called a standardized residual that's going to uh, go into that. First, we'll talk a little bit about chi-square and the formula for the standardized residual. Then we'll go into SPSS and see how it all works. So here's the formula for the chi-square. Um, it is the sum of observed minus expected squared divided by the expected. So we have our cross-tabulation table here. We have a uh, five-year a study on um, medication for glaucoma. And after five years, we have uh, people that were randomly assigned to no medication or medication, and they developed COAG. Um, they developed glaucoma or they didn't. And we have these cells in A, B, and then A plus B is the marginal total. And when we talk about chi-square and the significance of chi-square, we're looking to see if these cells are randomly distributed given the marginal totals. And so that means that the marginal totals, like you wouldn't necessarily expect random to be equal numbers in all these cells if you had a whole lot more in this row than in this row. You would expect it to be proportional. And it's proportional based on both the rows and the columns. So it's it's uh, random given uh, the marginal totals. So in this study, we had um, 741 that did not develop, 78 that did, that didn't have medication. We had 781 versus 36 in uh, in this and and the expected value so if we take cell a that's the expected value minus its observed or it's expected nah, we have observed number of people minus the expected and we would square that and divide it by expected so observed is easy it's 741 expected we take this marginal total a plus b a plus b times C plus D divided by A plus C plus D, the total. So that's 819 times 1522 divided by 1636. And we get an expected value in this cell by chance alone, given the marginal totals, of 761. So we can see that with no medication, no POAG is a little bit less than we would expect from random chance. And then to get the chi-square, you do that, you, or you go through the math, you subtract the expected from the observed, divide by expected, and then you add all of those up, and that gives you the chi-square. Um, if observed equaled expected in each case, you'd get a zero, and the sum would, for chi-square would be zero. But in fact, the the usual mean of the null distribution when you have chance, you have just chance around here, you, you, you have the chance frequencies, but those chances aren't um, 
necessarily exactly what the expected values are. So there's a distribution, just like on the t-test. When the null hypothesis is true, there is a distribution of possible t's. Uh, here it's the same thing. The chi-square has different uh, has a variety of distribution just due by chance variation, even though the actual um, um, distribution is chance. And, and the mean of that distribution depends on how many cells there are. So degrees of freedom here are the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. In this case, it's two rows minus one times two columns minus one. That's one times one is one. But if you had, in the case of ethnicity, if you um, and you were looking down here, and you'd have four four different ethnicities with no polag and polag, it would be four minus one, which would be three, and two minus one, which would be one. So the degrees of freedom would be three times one. And then the mean of the null high, null high square distribution, which has a very skewed sort of format, would be three. That equal to be a three. Uh, so that's the chi square. Then we have this, um, but we have this little thing here where um, what's called the standardized residual of the chi square. So what that is, if you look at this, um, what you get is observed minus, when you take the square root of it, you get observed minus expected divided by expected. And that actually is distributed as a C-score. So that's for each individual cell. So for example, in our cell A from the POE example, we have 741 minus the expected value, 761. That's squared um, divided by 761 is 0.579. The standardized residual is the square root of that, a 0.76. So that individual cell has a z-score of being different from chance of 0.76, which because it's less than 2, we wouldn't say that was significant. So that's not where the significance comes from in that chi-square if it is. Um, in SPSS, and we'll see an example in a second here, uh, the adjusted standardized residuals when the sample size is large, and the expected frequencies are very different. Like in our POAG example, where we had 114 POAGs, uh, people with glaucoma, and 1,522 that weren't. We don't expect even distributions around here. So we do an adjusted standardized residual that takes into account these differences in size. We didn't have any differences in medication, but we did have differences in the resulting number of people that developed glaucoma. Now let's look at an example where we have actual data for each individual subject. And we'll go to our longitudinal vision study data. And we're going to look at the relationship between uh, what the children actually ended up, their last refractive status being extreme myopic, uh, myopic, emetropic, hyperopic, and extreme hyperopic. And we're going to look and see if their stat their final status was a function of ethnicity. Well, you can see here our data um, has, this is the same person, so we have six levels of that. So we're just going to pick one. And it doesn't really matter because their ethnicity doesn't change over time. But let's do the conditions if uh, visit equals zero. So we're going to take their first visit. And then we're going to do a cross tab and, and the line. So, um, 
in SPSS to do a cross tab and chi square and standardized re residuals, we go to descriptive statistics and then we come down to cross tabs. So our cross tabulation is ethnicity by proactive status. And we can choose either one for either column. Um, I tend to put rows where there's a lot of values and columns where there's fewer. In this case, it's about the same either way, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to put refractive status in the columns because I like the kind of the outcome variable. So does ethnicity drive something? And this is the dependent variable. Now, we can go to our statistics and click on chi-square. And for our cells, we have observed. It's helpful to look at expected. And we could do percentages like row or column. So for example, we want to know um, what's the percentage of Caucasians across uh, of refractive status? We can put in row percents. And then we have our residuals. We have unstandardized is just observed minus expected. Standardized is observed minus expected divided by expected. And a divide observe minus expected divided by the square root of expected because it's the square root of that that function within chi-square and adjusted is it just it's essentially the same thing but it makes adjustments for the to adjust for the different proportions of values so we're going to do adjusted in this case and continue and that's really all there is to this. A pretty simple procedure. Okay. So what we have here is our cross tab ta table. So we have 151 Asians, 395 African Americans, 398 Hispanics, and 328 um, Caucasians. And this gives us the frequency of hyperopes. So you'll notice we don't have very many hyperopes. And, in, and expected values are actually a little small. In chi-square, we really want the expected values to be um, in a table with this many subjects, two or greater. And we're kind of on the edge there. We're okay there. We're okay there. We're okay there. Uh, there. And it's expected value we're interested in, not the count. So we want to have, in order to meet the assumptions of the chi-square statistic, we need to have this value be 2. It's pretty close, and it's the only one, so we're just going to let it go. If we, if we wanted to do something about this, what we would do is create another variable and collapse hyperoptic and extreme hyperop. Put those two columns together and compare it to these others. Okay. Now, so we have count, expected count. We can see that for extreme myopics among Asians in this population, the expected was 5.2, but we observed 18. So we observed three times more than we would have expected by chance. Um, And in this population, is the Asians in this country, we see as we go across, we've got 100% accounted for. Most of them were in the tropic at the end of the study. If this was 
conducted in Asia, we'd probably get a different answer for Asians. But you can see extreme hyperopes were three times more, and the adjusted residual is 6.1. That means that's a z-score of 6.1, which is considerably larger than 2. So this is a very significant um, finding from a from a rejecting the null hypothesis point of view. We see that for emetropes, while we had 60%, we expected 108 and only saw 90. So we're actually significantly less than a minus 3.5, which is greater than a, a bigger number than minus 2. And so it's also significant. Um, we come down, we look at, we, we can kind of go and look for which values are greater than 2. And so hyperopic less than expected for uh, Asians. So we expected 8, we only saw 3. Uh, African Americans, we expected 21, we saw 20. That's a tiny z score. So for African Americans, the only thing that was significant, well, I guess emetropes, um, emetropes had more than expected, and African Americans had less extreme my myopia. For the um, Hispanics, they were significantly higher, 99 versus 72, on my, being a mile, and significantly less, um, 285, 258, compared to what was expected as 286 about. So that was significant. Come down a little further, we look at Caucasians. They were less myopic than would be expected. You would expect it, based on chance, of almost 60, and we found 28. So there was less myopia among Caucasians. And there were more emetropes and a little bit more hyperopes. So that's the standardized residual. Without it, we'd have to rely on this very significant um, chi-square of 91. Now the degrees of freedom are, we had 1, 2, 3, 4 minus 1 is 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 minus 1 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. That's how many degrees of freedom we have. And it's p less than 0 0.0001. All right, so that's the adjusted residual. This is a little handy thing to find out where the differences are when you get this overall chi-square.